Women's rights was started by two major figures, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony. Elizabeth Cady Stanton was born on November 12, 1815 in Johnstown, New York. Her parents preferred boys and were upset when they had a girl. Later she married Henry Brewster Stanton, who was a major slave abolitionist. She began going to conventions, but was angered when they did not recognize women as delegates. In 1847, Elizabeth and her husband moved to New York and organized the very first women's rights convention known as the Seneca Falls Convention. Between 100 and 300 people attended, as well as, as, well as Frederick Douglass. She drafted up a declaration saying that men and women are equal. Also in the declaration, she included women's voting rights. Susan B. Anthony was born on February 15, 1820 in Adams, Massachusetts. Both of her parents were strong abolitionists and supporters of the temperance movement. Susan Anthony began her career as a teacher at the age of 15 and would continue till the age of 30. She shortly left after her teaching salary was equal to that of one-fifth of her male colleagues. Trapaholics. After being unable to speak at the Sons of Temperance meeting due to her gender, she created the Daughters of Temperance. She wrote articles for the Lily, which was the first newspaper owned by a woman. At a temperance meeting in 1851, Susan met Elizabeth Stanton. They became good friends and would work tirelessly toward women's rights. In 1860, they got New York State Legislature to pass the Married Women's Property Act, which allowed women to enter into contracts and control their own property and earnings. Together, they formed the National Women's Suffrage Association. The association heavily pursued voting for women. It became the most nationally visible and important pro-suffrage group very quickly. Its goal was to fight for rights state by state due to the belief that state by state support would eventually lead to federal support. It became the parent organization of smaller and local state groups. Together they would continue to work and would later gain women's suffrage in four states. But the work they did laid the, the groundwork for women's activists of today to pick up and continue towards women's equality in America. Swollen, oh,